what is renewable energy? Renewable energy is energy that is not lost when used. And these sources also release less carbon dioxide and pollution compared to dirty energy, such as coal and fossil fuels. So forms of renewable energy include solar energy, which is energy derived from the sun, and it can be collected through solar thermal panels, which collect the heat um, through either parabolic trough systems, parabolic dish systems, or power towers, or um, solar energy can be collected through photovoltaic cells, um, which collect light energy. Uh, and then wind energy is another form of renewable energy, and it collects energy from the blowing of the wind through wind turbines. And then there's geothermal energy, which is heat energy resulting from the radioactive decay of atoms that releases heat that rises to the surface of the earth, earth and then it heats water trapped underground, and that produces steam that can spin a turbine, which also generates electricity. And then there's biomass, renewable energy, which is energy coming from the processing of energy crops like sugarcane and corn and residue from the woods used in constructions. And uh, these can be processed either by direct combustion, where they would burn the biomass in a boiler to heat water and then run the steam through a turbine, or through gasification, where they turn the biomass into a gas to be burned in a combustion turbine. So why is renewable energy necessary? Renewable energy first started gaining momentum after the government's push for it during the OPEC energy embargo. In 1973, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, um, imposed an embargo on the U.S. for assisting Israeli forces in the Yom Kippur War. So in 1974, President Nixon established the Federal Energy Administration, Energy Research and Development Administration, and the Energy Resource Council to develop and encourage renewable energy alternatives and conserve oil and gas. However, renewable energy has gained further success due to the looming effects of climate change. Without a decrease in the current rates of carbon dioxide emissions, the world is likely to see a 3.7 degrees Celsius to a 4.8 degrees Celsius temperature increase by 20, 2100. And that would mean that wheat, rice, and maize, which are uh, some of the main sources for food, um, would have see decreased production, and many plants and animals would face extinction, which would decrease the biodiversity and therefore cause food insecurity. So the next question is, how should the government be involved? There are a couple different ways that the government can be involved by instituting a cap and trade or a carbon tax or a combination of those to make renewable energy competitive with its dirty energy counterparts. So I'll explain what each of those are. Uh, so a cap and trade would set a cap on the amount of emissions for a year and the individuals can, uh, individuals or organizations can sell excess units of emissions to other organizations that they do not use or buy emissions from other organizations if they exceed their allowances. And a carbon tax would set the price for carbon. However, it is difficult to predict the price needed to curb pollution. A blended option could set a fee for emissions past the cap and trade limit with revenue raised going toward the renewable energy research and production which includes the benefits of a carbon tax having the revenue and also the cap and trade which would set a limit on the amount of emissions for the year. And currently industries like coal and fossil fuels have unaccounted for negative externalities, meaning that the cost of the good does not include the cost to society of the pollution and the bad air quality. And so this is another reason why having a carbon tax or a cap and trade or a combination of those is necessary in addition to making it more competitive for renewable energy in the free market. So here are some of the history behind different things that have been done in the past, different pieces of legislation, uh, and different movements in order to pursue renewable energy. So there's been the 1978 National Energy Act, which gave renewable energy tax credits, and the 1980 Energy Security Act included 
legislation for the expansion of solar, geothermal, ocean thermal, and other renewable energy resources. But despite legislation to expand research and these tax credits, between 2002 and 2008, fossil fuels received $72 billion in subsidies, while renewable energy received only $29 billion. Though fossil fuels are far more established and renewable energy is an emerging field that should be receiving more support um, to establish itself. Tax credits are like discounts on taxes that are given to the private sector organizations to make production and research of renewable energy more affordable. And uh, we can see that the cost of solar energy saw a 70% decline from 2008 to 2011, and the total cost of generating electricity from wind power has dropped more than two thirds since 2009. Um, and so, while not necessarily a causal effect of tax credits, you definitely have seen this correlation between the expansion of tax credits and the development and increased efficiency of the renewable energy industry. When these tax credits were extended past the deadline, research and production increased, as you'll see in this chart. State Energy Efficiency Programs Improvement Act of 1990 sought to partner with states, and state programs started by this legislation have led to the installation of more than 60,000 renewable energy systems, more than 8 million kilowatt hours, enough to light nearly 12 million classrooms for an average school day of 6.7 hours, or to make more than 150 million waffles. Another thing that the government has done is the Million Solar Roofs Initiative, which was uh, started in 1997. And it installed the 200 megawatts of uh, photovoltaic capacity and 200 megawatts of solar heating capacity, and also provided an estimated health, be health benefit saving of $90 million, decreased carbon dioxide emissions by 3.3 million tons, and uh, the gross national product saw an increase of $2.6 billion. In addition to all these benefits, it also brought back $7.1 million in cash for the $16 million invested. Now, the government, the government must invest back in the production and research of renewable energy using the carbon tax and carbon um, cap and trade hybrid to allow renewable energy to compete, along with movements and, and investments such as the Million Solar Roofs Initiative and the extension of tax credits further. So what benefits does renewable energy provide that make this plan worthwhile? The Department of Energy's Wind Vision study conducted in 2013 found that increasing wind power to 10% of the U.S. electricity by 2020 and 20% by 2030 would result in a $41 megawatt hour in avoided health and environmental um, benefits from reduced air pollution for only a 1% increase in electricity prices in 2030. And that would also result in an additional $280 billion in consumer saving from reduced natural gas prices due to a reduction in the demand. Another study by the Wisconsin Energy Bureau estimated that renewables create three times as many jobs as an equal amount of funds spent on fossil fuels. Renewable energy creates jobs, saves the environment by decreasing the release of carbon dioxide and other types of pollution, is able to increase in efficiency and in the future will likely have see a decrease in price just as it has in previous years so that it will be increasingly efficient and affordable and accessible as long as it's able to compete in the market. Government funded programs like the Million Solar Roofs Initiative would have to subsidize private public partnerships so that these organizations could carry out the actual production with set production standards, and they would get their funding by meeting those production standards. But then the National Renewable Energy Lab would be able to do more of the research-based work that would help decrease the prices of production, but also help with not making it so that they aren't able to compete in a public market way. I hope that you've learned something today about renewable energy and the way that the government should go about pursuing it, and also its importance in our society today and for the well-being of the world as a whole. Thank you.